Okay, so we've got, uh, we're running a couple minutes behind this morning, but we're going to be in Acts chapter 10 today, and so uh, I encourage you to grab your Bible and uh, go over to Acts chapter 10, and uh, we're going to be looking at a, a social distancing uh, story in the Bible that, uh, that I call a social distancing failure uh, and a social distancing success story all wrapped up in one. Uh, and so we're, we're going to take this class for about 30 minutes today. Usually we would stop at uh, quarter till the hour, uh, but uh, we're going to stop at 10 till the hour. And we'll see, maybe even 8 till the hour. We'll see if we can uh, get all of this in. But um, once you think about what happens in, uh, in Acts chapter 10 and uh, think about what transpires with uh, the, the history of the church and what's going on in Acts chapter 10, and as you look at that, obviously we know the story in Acts chapter 10 of, uh, of Cornelius and the fact that, well, let me see, am I on the right one here? Let's make sure we're on the right, nope. Let me give you the right input. There we go. So we know the story about Cornelius and the fact that in Acts chapter 10, he is described as a very religious man, and yet as a very religious man, he did not know Christ. And so an angel came and appeared to Cornelius and told Cornelius, you need to send men uh, to go down to Joppa, and you need to find a man uh, whose name is Peter and uh, send for him to come and to see you. And so uh, uh, he did that. But in the meantime, while an angel was speaking to, uh, to uh, Cornelius, well, a couple days later, it, it took about two days for those men to get there uh, in their travels. And so they arrived there. And uh, uh, when they arrived there, Peter is also receiving a message uh, from the Lord. And it's an interesting message. And uh, it would definitely be an interesting message for you to receive that uh, here's, here's God trying to give Peter some information about the fact that he needs to take the gospel to the Gentiles which uh, God could have just come out and said that, but instead what he does is he, he has this picture, this, this image, as it were, of a sheet coming down for Peter to see, full of all kinds of animals, and uh, God tells Peter to rise, kill, and eat. And Peter says, not going to happen, Lord. I've never eaten anything unclean, and it's not going to start now. Uh, and God told him, don't you call anything that I have cleansed common or unclean. Uh, and so the Bible says that God did that three times. Uh, trying to get the message to Peter that you don't call anything that I have cleansed unclean. So while Peter is thinking about that, uh, these men from Joppa, these men from Cornelius, they come and uh, they come and meet Peter and they tell Peter, look, we've got we've received this message. We're supposed to come down here. Uh, we're supposed to take you uh, back with us to Cornelius's house, uh, back to uh, Caesarea and to, uh, uh, you know, to to be there with Cornelius. Well, Peter doesn't fully understand yet. He doesn't fully understand the, uh, the revelation that God had made to him, doesn't understand the sheet with the animals in it. He doesn't even understand what these three men, uh, what these men are here to tell him. Uh, and he doesn't even know what he's going to do when he, and, and we'll see this when you get into chapter 10, he doesn't even know what he's expected to do when he gets back to Cornelius' household. He just knows God told him to go, uh, and uh, God said, just go down to these three men, Go with them and don't doubt. Just do what they say. So that's what Peter does. Uh, and so they travel from Joppa uh, to Caesarea, which is about a two-day journey. And so it took those men two days, about two days, to get from Caesarea down to Joppa. Uh, and so they, they turn around and leave Joppa, go up to Caesarea. And so it's been four days since, uh, since Cornelius had received that, that vision from the Lord. And four days later, Peter shows up at his house. Four days later, this Jew comes into his home, and uh, at that time, Cornelius has all of his family, all of his friends that he has invited to come over uh, because he wants them to hear whatever uh, Peter is going to say. And so Peter gets the opportunity to preach the gospel uh, to Cornelius and his household and to everybody who is gathered there, and uh, they all listen intently uh, to what he has to say. And no doubt this had to be a... Uh, a remarkable event for Peter to think about what was happening. Uh, and for him, you know, he preached the gospel to the Jews in Acts chapter 2, and now he's standing here before a group of Gentiles preaching the gospel to them. And uh, 
it was certainly a, uh, uh, something that was eye-opening for him. Uh, and so the Bible says that the Holy Spirit fell upon these men as, as he began preaching to them. Uh, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, and they began speaking uh, in, uh, in other languages. They were not saved yet, uh, but uh, the Lord had caused the Holy Spirit to fall upon Cornelius and his house so that Peter and the other Jews who were with him, there were six men uh, who had come there uh, from Joppa. The, the Lord had caused the Holy Spirit to fall upon Cornelius and his household even before Peter finished his preaching so that they would understand that the gospel was not just for the Jews, but the gospel was for the Gentiles. And so Peter told them that they needed to be baptized for the remission of their sins, just as everybody else had been uh, had been baptized in the New Testament to, for the remission of sins. And uh, that day, you have a group of Gentiles who become Christians. So that's, that's Acts chapter 10 in a very quick nutshell look at it. So what I want us to do is I want us to think about the fact that there's a lot of lessons that we can learn here in Acts chapter 10. Uh, but one of the lessons that we learn, you know, here we are living in a day of uh, social distancing. And in that day, it was a day of social distancing, not because of a coronavirus, uh, not because of any uh, health concern, not any uh, uh, at least not stated in those in those terms, but it was a day and age where there was social distancing because Jews and Gentiles would not be around each other. They practiced distancing from each other. I want you to see this. Look in Acts chapter 10. Look in verse 28. This verse is always amazing. Peter comes from Joppa. He gets up to Cornelius' house. And he still, isn't, he still doesn't even know why he's there. And, and you see that when he gets there. And, uh, and he asks them, you know, why, why have you called me? Why have you sent for me? Why am I here? Um, and so you look down to verse 28 of Acts chapter 10. And he said to them, you know, here's Peter saying to these Gentiles who's standing in their house, you know how unlawful it is for a Jewish man to keep company with or to go to one of another nation. Peter comes to this, gen, to this Gentile's house and he tells them, you know what? This is not common. This is not what we do. The, the Jews and the Gentiles, we don't get together like this. And so he states to them, he, he's not fussing at them. He's not preaching at them at this point. He's just stating, he's stating a fact. He's stating something that, that had been practiced by the Jews and Gentiles by individuals who hated each other, wanted nothing to do with each other. And so maybe he's stating just a, an obvious thing for them right up front to say, you know what? We don't get together, do we? Um, and John chapter 4 and verse 9, there's a, there's a similar expression uh, there about, about the Jews and the Samaritans, that the Jews and the Samaritans did not have any dealings with each other. And uh, sometimes, in, in, in some ways, that's for similar reasons, but look at Acts chapter 11. Because in Acts chapter 11, after the Jews who were still in, in Jerusalem, and particularly the apostles who were Jews, when they heard that, that, the, uh, that Peter had been down there, they heard that these, these Gentiles had become Christians. Look in Acts chapter 11, and look in verse 2. Peter came to Jerusalem, and those of the circumcision, the Jews, the apostles, the Jews, contended with Peter. Here are the apostles, and, and they are they are they're, they're they're starting as it were a contention between them, and they say to Peter in verse 3, You went up, where'd you go? You went into uncircumcised men. You went to the Gentiles and you ate with them. They're, they're stating not just a fact that he had done that, they're stating to him, Why'd you do that, Peter? They're asked, in, in essence saying, we can't believe that you went to them. And so they want to know, why did you go? Why did you go to this, to this man's house? They, they, they're not like us. Don't you know that they're different from us? There was a sharp contention between Jews and Gentiles in that day. They practiced social distancing because they did not want to be around each other. Think about that. You know, you, you could have... You could have two boys born at the same time 
in that day and age. Two boys born at the same time in that day and age. And they grow up hating each other. They don't even know each other. But they grow up hating each other. Why? Because that's what everybody does. That's what their parents have raised them to do. Oh, you know those Gentiles? We don't like them. We don't, we don't do anything with them. Oh, you know those Jews? No, we don't have anything to do with them. Why? Why? Because that's just the way it had always been. And they weren't willing to change that. They were practicing social distancing. And I would suggest to you it was a failure. It was a failure that these individuals were doing that. And it wasn't just that the Jews and Gentiles were practicing social distancing from each other. Let me get to the right PowerPoint here. For those of you who are watching online, I've hit the wrong button. Um, but it's interesting that the Gentiles were practicing social distancing. And for those of you who are in the auditorium, I hit the wrong button for you too. There we go. I don't even know what I had up there for the auditorium people. Um, but now that's where we're supposed to be. The Gentiles had been practicing, you might call it, social distancing. They had been practicing distancing from Christ, from the gospel of Christ. Uh, they, they were, in Ephesians chapter 2, you have the expression that they were without Christ. Uh, they were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. They were without God, and they had no hope. Uh, and so the Gentiles had, had set themselves apart to be uh, different from and not alike with the Jews, uh, and because of that, they were setting themselves apart to have nothing to do with, with Christ, uh, who, uh, who was going to come about as a result of Judaism. When you think about, when you think about the Jewish religion, it's not just that it was uh, some kind of a meaningless temporary religion. While it was intended to be temporary, the purpose of it was to bring about Christ. The purpose of God bring, uh, establishing this covenant between himself and the Jews was to bring about Christ. Uh, and, uh, and so the Gentiles, they were not a part uh, of that. And, and so that needed to be fixed. The Gentiles needed to be able to, to have an access to Christ, to Christianity, to the gospel, just as much as the Jews did. And we'll, we'll talk more about that uh, in just a minute. But the last thing I want us to see about the failure, we're going to talk about the success side about this in a minute. But the last thing I want us to see about the failure is that Peter himself had been practicing distancing, had been practicing social distancing um, from what, what I've got on the screen, from divine impartiality. God was not a partial God, but Peter was practicing that. I want you to look in Acts chapter 10, and I want you to imagine being Peter, and imagine this scene as uh, in verse 9, Peter goes up on the housetop to pray, and it's about the sixth hour, it's noon. Well, what do you normally do at noon? Just curious. What do you normally do at noon? Well, not much has changed because what does verse 10 tell you about Peter at noon? He was hungry. It's lunchtime. It's, it's time to eat. And so it's, he's very hungry. Maybe Peter normally ate at 1130 and now it's noon and he's very hungry and he wanted to eat. And so while it was being made ready, he fell into a trance, the New King James says in verse 11. He saw heaven open and an object like a great sheet bound at the four corners descending to him and let down to the earth. I want you to imagine being Peter and you're watching this take place. Inside of this sheet, verse 12, were all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. He sees all of these animals. So inside the sheet, there are clean and unclean animals. And so a voice comes and says, rise, kill, and eat. But Peter said, where, where do you think that voice came from? Where, where do you think Peter thought that voice was coming from? Verse 14 says, but Peter said, not so, Lord. Peter heard a voice from heaven tell him to do something, and Peter said, not going to happen. Not so, Lord. Maybe Peter thought this was just a test. I, I, I don't think Peter is intentionally trying to be rebellious on this occasion. Perhaps he thought it was a test. But he says, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything common or unclean. And a voice spoke to him, no doubt the same voice that said, rise, kill, and eat. And a voice spoke to him again the second time and said, what God has cleansed, you must not call common. 
And the next verse says this was done three times. You know, it's interesting to think about three times. How many times did Peter deny the Lord? Three times. How many times did Jesus ask him in John chapter 21, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you? Three times. Three times the Lord gives Peter this message. And the object then in the verse 16 was taken up into heaven again. And verse 17 says Peter was perplexed. Peter was wondering over and over, what did this mean? The Lord was trying to get a message to Peter. And he was doing this by way of a very vivid illustration that God was no longer looking at any animals as being unclean, but God's message here was not about the animals. And Peter figured that out. When you get over to chapter 11, and he's recounting this uh, to, the, to his apostle friends, he figured out God's not talking about animals here. God's talking about people. And that people... The Gentiles are no longer unclean in the eyes of God. But Peter had been practicing social distancing from these people. And in fact, the, if, if you want to see the rest of the story, even after this, Peter didn't get it. Not completely. You go later on into Galatians chapter 2, you'll see again that Peter starts practicing social distancing from the Gentiles, but only... Only in Galatians 2, when his Jewish friends see him hanging out with the Gentiles, and then he starts to distance himself from the Gentiles. Oh, no, you know, I, I, I don't have anything to do with him. I want you to think about the failure that social distancing can... I, I, I'm using that social distancing concept today because that's what we are experiencing. But obviously, we've got to practice social distancing to an extent because of the, the things that are happening. But here were people... They were not practicing social distancing because they were concerned about catching some virus and dying. They were doing it because they hated each other. That's a failure. That's a failure to practice that kind of social distancing. But I want us to think about this social distancing today and think about what kind of success can we see in this? What kind of success stories can we see in this practicing where not the practice of social distancing, but the removal of social distancing helped this to become a success. First thing I want us to see is that when they stopped practicing social distancing, there was success because Peter was able to take the gospel to a Gentile house. I don't know who it is that we, and, and we, could, we, could, we could name all sorts of groups or individuals today. I don't know who it is not because of a virus, but because of our own behaviors and because of our own upbringing. I don't know who it is specifically that you might be social distancing yourself from today. But here's Peter of a Jewish background who takes the gospel to Cornelius, who's of a Gentile background. And I want you to hear that this is one of the most wonderful sermons recorded in the book of Acts. When Peter gets there and he begins to tell them about Jesus. Look at Acts chapter 10. Look at Acts chapter 10, verse 36, where he, he really begins this part of the sermon. He says, the word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace. Where did peace come from? God wants, and I want you to think about right at the beginning of his sermon, Peter is preaching to them about peace. Was, was there a need for peace among the Jews and the Gentiles? That's, what, that's where how it starts his sermon. He says, there, there is peace that is to be had, but he says in verse 36, that peace is only through Jesus Christ because he is, look at the end of verse 36. He is the Lord of, not the Jews. He is the Lord of, not the Gentiles. He's the Lord of the Jews and the Gentiles. He's the Lord of all. And so he says to them, that word you know, verse 37, which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. I want you to think about that how he surveys the life of Jesus here in verse 38, how God appointed Jesus or God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about, here's a summary of Jesus's life. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. And Peter says, we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem whom they killed. What did they do? They killed him. The Jews did. Not the Gentiles. The Jews killed him by hanging him on a tree. He's standing there talking to Gentiles, and he says, you know what those Jews did? They killed him. 
They killed the Son of God. But what did God do in verse 40? Him God raised up on the third day and showed him openly, not to all uh, the people. He didn't show him to everybody, but to witnesses chosen before by God. God had this all orchestrated. And even to us who ate and drank with him after he arose from the dead, and he commanded us to preach to the people. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that it is he who was ordained by God, Jesus ordained by God, to be the judge of all the living and the dead. To him, Christ, all the prophets witness that through his name, whoever believes in Christ will receive the remission of sins. And so here's Peter getting an opportunity to stand up and preach to the Gentiles. And you look at the last verse of chapter 10 where he says to these individuals, guess what? You have the same opportunity the Jews do. Jesus wanted those uh, on the day of Pentecost to have remission of sins. What did they need to do? Repent to be baptized. And he wants you in Acts chapter 10, the Gentiles, to have remission of sins. What do you need to do? Repent and be baptized. Here's a success story. When social distancing, when the distancing was taken away and Peter went and took the gospel down to Cornelius and his household, you see success. You see success in the fact that when Peter got there, Cornelius was not practicing social distancing from everybody in town. Cornelius had gathered his entire, uh, his entire family. Apparently, Look at verse 24. Cornelius was waiting for them when they got there, and he called together his relatives and close friends. So when Peter gets there, there is a household full of people to hear what, uh, what Peter is going to tell them. And so even when Peter is recounting this, uh, over in chapter 11 and verse 14, he talks about the fact that there was a household there full of people ready to hear this gospel proclaimed. Uh, and so uh, down in verse chapter 10 and verse 33, uh, Cornelius says, we're all present here, Peter. We're all present here to hear what you have to say. What, what, a, what an example. What an example for us. Cornelius is getting ready to hear the gospel. He knows he's getting ready to hear something because the Lord sent an angel to tell him, you need to send for Peter so that you can hear what you need to do to be saved. And so what does Cornelius do? He doesn't just wait to hear it by himself. He wants everybody that he knows to hear the good news. Not practice social distancing. He wants everybody that he knows to hear the gospel. I wonder, do we want everybody we know? Do we want everybody that we know to hear the gospel? So much so that, that social barriers are not going to stop us. That, that, that ethnic barriers, racial barriers, whatever it may be, is not going to stop us. That we want to bring people into our homes, and whether we can do that now or not, and, and after this, this epidemic passes, do we want to bring people into our homes so that they can hear the gospel proclaimed? When that distancing, when, when Cornelius is not practicing social distancing, when he brings everybody into his home, to hear the gospel, it's not, it's not failure, it's, it is success. And so the, 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 the last thing I want us to see about this matter of, uh, of social distancing being removed and the success that comes about from it is that at least on this occasion, Peter stopped practicing partiality. As I mentioned, you get to Galatians chapter 2, and he, he picks it up again. It's hard it was hard for them to stop doing it. But I want you to look back in Acts chapter 10. Look at that verse we looked at before where Peter told them it's unlawful, not according to the law of God, but just according to their customs. Unlawful uh, it is for a Jewish man to keep company with or go to one of another nation. But I want you to look right after that. Look, that that's what he tells them. He tells them this is unlawful according to custom for us to be together. And look very carefully in Acts chapter 10 verse 28. It's unlawful to keep company with or to go to one of another nation, period. You see the period after the word nation. All right, if you got the period after the word nation, what are the next two words after the period? According to our custom, we shouldn't be together. But what does it say after the period? But God. Our custom doesn't matter. What's been normal for us doesn't matter. What has been practiced by our generations doesn't matter. Why? But God has shown me that I should not call any man. See, he got the message. <laughs> that the vision was not about animals. He got the message. Not talking about the animals. 
that I should not call any man unclean or common. How dare we call anybody common or unclean? How dare we talk about somebody not having a right to the gospel? And so Peter recognized that, but God has shown me. And so verse 29, he says, therefore I came, think about this, I came without objection. God told him, go down there without doubting. Back in, uh, what verse did he say that? In verse, verse 20, go with them without doubting. So here in verse 29, he says, I came without objection. As soon as I was sent for, I didn't delay. I asked then, for what reason have you sent for? Peter still didn't know the fullness of why he was there. And yet he went there because God told him to go. Look very quickly over in chapter, chapter 11. And chapter 11 is where Peter is telling this to, the, to his Jewish friends. He's, telling, he's recounting all of this. And the Bible says he told it in order. Everything that happened uh, back in the verse 4 of chapter 11 says he, re, he recounted this in order from the beginning. But look at verse 17. He's telling them what happened. And he tells them that the Holy Spirit fell upon the Gentiles just as, as it had upon the apostles. Look in verse 17. Peter's conclusion to this. If therefore God gave them, these Gentiles, if therefore God gave the Gentiles the same gift as he gave us when we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, here's the question. Who was I that I could withstand what a question. Peter saying to his friends, what right did I have to thwart the plan of God? What right did I have to withstand what God wanted me to do? And we need to ask ourselves that same question. What right do I have to stand in the way of the gospel going to every creature on earth, even in the day of social distancing? What right do I have to not take the gospel to every creature on earth? I want to close today by just pointing out some things that even in our day of social distancing, some things that we need to take into consideration. While social distancing is necessary uh, today, that doesn't mean that the gospel has to be socially distanced from people. There are ways for us to get the gospel to people even in the days of social distancing, but we need to realize that our social distancing is temporary. Uh, it has limitations. So the first thing I want you to think about is we don't need to distance ourselves because of partiality. We live in a world that is full of partiality. We live in a world today that people are, people seem to be making things worse by wanting to, by, by wanting to uh, enforce some kind of partiality even more. Let us not practice distancing because of partiality. James chapter 2 is one of the clearest verses in James chapter 2 and verse 9 where the Bible says, if you show partiality, if you practice social distancing, you won't be around certain people because they're a certain color, they're a certain race, they're a certain ethnicity, they're a certain economic status, they're a certain this, a certain that. If you practice social distancing from people because of their status, James chapter 2 verse 9 says you see. That's what it says. So we need to see every person on this earth as a soul who needs the gospel. That's what Peter did even in a day in his day when they were, when they were involved in social distancing. Number two, we don't need to distance ourselves from the power that's in the gospel. I don't know what Peter thought was going to happen when he got to Cornelius' house. I don't know what he thought was going to happen when he started preaching to this group of renegades, these, these, these lousy Gentiles, but he still preached the gospel to them. And the gospel was just as powerful among the Gentiles as it was uh, among the Jews back in Acts chapter 2. And his whole household was baptized on that day, not because of Peter and his goodness, but because of the gospel and its power. And what you see, uh, there's a key verse, and we don't have time to develop this, but there's a key verse in, in Acts chapter 11, verse 14, when Peter is explaining this to the, to the apostles, he, 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 he explains that what was transpiring is that they, he had gone there to preach to them the word of God. And it is the word of God in Acts chapter 11 and verse 14 who, that Peter would come and tell them words by which all of the household could be saved. Peter was not the one who would save them. It was the gospel of Christ that would be able to save them. Third thing I want us to think about is we don't need to distance ourselves from telling people about Christ. There is an emphasis throughout this chapter. Uh, the verses are on the screen. 
there's an emphasis throughout this chapter on the words that Peter would speak. That 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 uh, Cornelius had gathered his family to hear the words that Peter would speak, and that they that he they had gathered the family to hear all the things commanded by you. And then in, again, chapter eleven, verse fourteen, who would tell them words by which they would be saved. On this occasion, it was not a vision that was going to save Cornelius and his household. He received a vision, but it wasn't the vision that was going to save them. On this occasion, it wasn't going to be a direct message from God. It was going to be words spoken by a Christian that were going to help him to be saved. And it's no different today. It's words that are spoken by Christians today that will help individuals to be saved. So we need to find joy and we need to find unparalleled satisfaction in talking to people about Jesus. Last thing I want us to think about today is that inside the church, we must not practice social distancing. I'm not talking about what's happening today. I'm talking about our practice as brothers and sisters in Christ. We must not practice partiality in the Lord's church today. Once this epidemic passes, once all of this is lifted and we're able to be out and about and with each other again, we must not practice partiality inside the Lord's church. God saved the Jews and God saved the Gentiles and there was not a Jewish church of Christ in the first century and a Gentile church of Christ and they all went to different congregations on Sunday because they wouldn't worship together. Just the opposite. They were all part of the same congregation. And you go to Colossae and you read the book of Colossians, you read the book of Philemon and you have slaves and masters in the same congregation together. Not practicing partiality, but practicing what God wanted them to practice, seeing each other as being a part of the family of God. Seeing each other as being equal inside the family of God. Galatians chapter 3, verse 28, the Bible says, there's not Jew or Greek, there's not Jew or Gentile. Neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, male nor female. But we're all one in Christ. In this day and age where we have to be practicing for a limited time social distancing. Let's not do this to where we practice it, to where the gospel cannot reach individuals who it needs to reach. May we not continue this where we, that where we keep ourselves away from people because they're different than us. May we not do this where we keep ourselves away from people in the church because they don't look like us. May we truly be children of God on this earth. May we strive to do all that we can to not see what Peter saw at first, but to see what Peter saw at second. People who were just as equal as him in need of the gospel and could be saved by it. Thank you all for being a part of this class. We've got about seven or eight minutes uh, before our worship begins. For those of you who are watching online, we're actually going to do a brief disconnect and a reconnect uh, of, the, uh, of the stream. So you are going to be disconnected from the stream momentarily, uh, and then we will, we will start the stream back up in just a minute. So sorry for that inconvenience, uh, but in just a moment, we will uh, start that stream back up. So uh, you should be able to be connected again within the next three minutes. Uh, we should be back up and running, and uh, we'll start our worship in about seven minutes. So don't go anywhere. Thank you for being with us for our class today. We will be right back.